Hi, this is Mr. Williamson, and this is the first lesson in biology. It's basically a, a history of biology and a quick uh, introduction to some of the things we'll be learning and, and how things were discovered. Um, you don't need to know the dates. That's not important. You don't even know to know, need to know who, um, anything, what people discovered. On a test, if I tell you that uh, Mr. Smith discovered blood, then th that's a fact. Mr. Smith d d d discovered blood, and... The question would be something about the blood. It's not going to be a trick question about, like, uh, does Mr. Smith really discover blood or something like that. This is not a history class. It's biology. So um, you might want a piece of paper, something to write with, take real quick notes. I don't expect a lot of notes on this. It's really just a background information and introduction to um, the process. So here we go. Um, biology, first of all, is the study of life. Bio is Greek for life. Ology is the study of. So this is the study of life. Um, biology. Real quickly, B, I don't even have a year for it. Uh, uh, many, many years ago. I mean, you know, I don't know how many thousand BC. Um, this gentleman right here, um, Aristotle, okay, uh, he had a, a, a lot of things. He was a, a philosopher, a Greek philosopher, and, and he had a lot. He had a lot of, of ideas on biology, and uh, and just science in general. A lot of things, and he was wrong. What we turns out, he was wrong on all, most of them. I don't actually know of any that he was right on, but um, I would just say most of the things he was wrong on. But for the time, he was the one that that made the uh, decisions and and taught the world about biology he brought science into the into the the common to the common man um for instance he would he, he believed in spontaneous generation life from no life he would look at a, a a puddle of mud and and there was nothing there and then in the spring after it rained there were tadpoles and fish and frogs and obviously the life had come from the mud well we now know that um, that's that's not the case we know that if you take a piece of of uh, raw meat like this here, um, and we leave it exposed, there will be flies that come in and they will lay their eggs and, and the maggots will grow and then new flies will come from that. But he didn't know that. So he just saw a piece of raw meat and he saw maggots appear and flies and he thought that it came from the meat. Life from no life. Well, we've done experiments. If you take a, um, if you take cheesecloth and cover up that, um, that, 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 uh, that meat, there will be no flies, but we remove the cover, like a cheesecloth here. If we, if we remove the cover, the flies will lay the eggs, and then there's maggots, and then we have the flies. Or if we keep it covered with paper or, or something, there are, never is any, um, any, any maggots or flies because they don't have an access to the, the, the meat and they don't lay the eggs. So that, that's how we've disproved his theories. But he was the first one to come up with a lot of the ideas of biology. In the second century, a gentleman named Galen, um, here, Galen, uh, came up with a lot of, disproved a lot of Aristotle's things. Like one of Aristotle's ideas was that the circulatory system, the, the arteries and the, and the veins, carried air from the lungs and around the body. He was the one that proved that um, that's not what happened, that, that you can see the circulatory system over here, that it's, it's blood that the, the, they carry. So... Um, he was one of the first ones to start doing experiments and showing. He basically did that by uh, autopsies of, of dead people and showing the, the people, what the, this other scientists, the, the community, what was going on. We then took a, 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 a siesta, a hiatus. We, the, the, the church is, um, kind of didn't allow any scientific research because they felt it was against their beliefs and things. So for seven centuries, there was not that much that went on. And then we had the Renaissance. Um, and Leonardo uh, um, da Vinci came about, and you can see him down here. Um, this is Leonardo here, yeah, real happy face. Um, Leonardo, he was he brought about. He did a lot of, of experiments, and he he dissected the human form over um, over here. He dissected the human form and showed the muscles and 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 such, and and showed how the anatomy of the body. Um, he was one of the first ones to show the the body that form met function and things like that. So, um, you know, he, he kind of brought, again, science and art together. Uh, and then there was the invention of the Gutenberg Press. Not really biology, but very important because the Gutenberg Press allowed mass production of, of printing of, of information. 
Before this, all books were uh, handwritten by, by usually by monks, um, and and so therefore the, the Gutenberg press brought pr the printing to the, the to the people. Yeah, they he they, they we made books, and so all the information that we had, we could actually use and share with with common everyday people. And you can see here um, a simple library. Oops, a simple library, and over on this side over here, you have. Um, specimens and things like that and but you look down here and there's books lots of books for people to read people could come in and read the books in the libraries in the great halls and share that information uh, and it allowed them to to learn so that the common people you could could also learn it wasn't just held to the, the aristocrats and the rich um, William Harvey in the 1600s, 1700s, somewhere in there. Again, I'm not worried about the dates. I'm not even worried about the name. It's the ideas. He showed that the circulatory system was one way. We, we used to think that the circulatory system, the blood pulsed one way and then it pulsed another way. And that was one way and it pulsed the other way. And one way and then the other way. He showed that it, was circ it, it circulated. It went in one direction. And you can do the same experiment. You can take your arm, or your, I, I, if I was going to demonstrate it, I would do it around my ankle, I, you know, or around your ankle, because a lot of people have veins on their ankles that you can see. And you can see what he's done. You have the veins here. You can follow them there. And he takes his finger and places it at this point, and then draws it along the vein towards the arm, towards the hand, away from the body. And what that does is it blocks the blood from coming this way, and it doesn't fill up because each one of their, there are actually little little valves that prevent the blood from flowing backwards. So if you do that to your arm, you, keep, you won't hurt it unless you cut your blood supply off for a long period of time. And why would you do that? Um, if you if you do that, you'll see that the vein empties out. But then when you let your finger go, it fills back up. And that's one of the things that he did by um, in, in showing the blood circulated. Uh, 1674, uh, Leyenhoek, Ant Antoine Leyenhoek, don't ask me how to spell that, uh, invented the microscope. Um, the microscope th th is right here. This is a very simple microscope. You put the specimens in this area, well, actually on this here, um, right there. You looked through this and you focus it with this knob. It was a very primitive microscope, but it allowed him to see things that you couldn't see with the, the, the human eye. For instance, over here. Uh, that's, that's that's wood. It's 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 a cross section of a of a, a a stem of a plant, and you can see the 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 cells and things like that. And he called them. That's what he called them. Cells. They reminded him of of like prison cells or rooms. So he called them cells, and that's where we get the term. Is is Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, who said that cell that that they reminded him of cells. We call them cells. So he, that opened up a whole bunch of, of information, the microscopic area. So we start taking a look at the world at a microscopic level. Carolus Linnaeus, uh, you can see his Linnae. Um, he categorized our, 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 the animals, the, bio, the biology. He put them into classes. He said that, that mountain lions and, and uh, tigers and lions and your, your cat Fluffy um, are all related. And... He said that uh, dogs and wolves and coyotes are all related. Um, and, and he was the one that he looked at organisms and said those are related. And we have now proven since then that they are through DNA and other sources. But he was the first one to classify organisms. Uh, a guy named Cuvier looked at the fossils. And he said, oh, look, look how um, the fossils here they, they, they resemble the plants of today, even though they're extremely old. They didn't know how old they were back then, but they're extremely old, and they resemble the fossils of today. He looked at the fossils fish, and he said they resemble the fish of today. And so he showed a relationship between the past and the present. Uh, in 1800, a gentleman named Jean Lamarck, he was a French scientist, he came up with the first idea of, of evolution, that, that organisms adapt and, and, and change over time. And he was close. He basically was saying that um, a giraffe, or the, pre the, the predecessor of that giraffe, the, the, its ancestor, had a short neck. And by stretching its neck up to get to the tops of the trees, it would grow, and each generation would have a longer neck. Well, he was kind of right. The, 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 each generation might have had a longer neck, but it was because the organisms that could survive, because they could reach the food, they were the ones that survived and, and passed those genes on. He didn't know about genes. He just said that uh, uh, acquired characteristics are passed on. 
and we know that's not true. It's not acquired. Like like if you cut your finger off in, in an accident, your children have all ten fingers. That it doesn't change. So that's not a uh, but that's an acquired characteristic. Um, so he, he he knew characteristics were passed on. He just had the wrong idea. And then in the 1850s, Charles Darwin took a, a five year voyage on the HMS Beagle, starting out in Plymouth, um, traveling to South America around. Kind of going the wrong way there. Around uh, South America, th across the Pacific, visiting. And at some point, he visited the Galapagos Islands right in here. And he came up with this idea of, of evolution. That characteristics change over time. It's, if, it's, it's a, if it's an adaptation, something that allows you to survive, something that allows an organism to survive, th if you can survive, you can pass that gene, those genes on. And therefore, your offspring will also have that adaptation. Um, and and that's that's kind of what he said, uh, and, w and all of these things we'll go into, or a lot of these things we'll go into in much more detail in, in the future. Uh, 1865, and this was actually um, they didn't realize that that he did this, but um, before Darwin came before him, and or his ideas came before him, and we didn't know the, the mechanism of Darwin, but Gregor Mendel. Um, in 1865, experimenting with pea plants, he was an he was an Austrian, not Australian, Austrian monk, who uh, who, who did a lot of experiments with a lot of peas and um, pea plants, and, and 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 showed genetics. He was the father of genetics, and and he was credited for with that long after Darwin. But but what he did was he gave the mechanism that Darwin's uh, ideas could take place. We didn't know about genetics then when Darwin came up with his, his, his theories, but it was Mendel that showed how it would work. Um, Post-1900, all kinds of things. The two gentlemen over here um, are Watson and Crick. They were, they were working out of Cambridge, England. Um, I think it was England, Cambridge, England. I could be wrong. Um, and they, they, they discovered the, 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 the structure of DNA, and you can, you can see that structure right here. Um, the, 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 the double helix, where if, if I draw something like um, something like this, and you immediately know that that this is um, DNA. You know that it's this the shape. So they were the ones that came up with that and showed that that shape is what allows DNA to take place. What you see um, down here is is penicillin. Uh, 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 off the top of my head, I forget his name, and I don't really care. He, he it was, it was a, a happy accident. He discovered that the mold penicillin was an antibacterial, and, and it allowed um, it, it caused the, the the bacteria not to grow in the medium. And we have used now used we discovered antibiotics, and then finally in 2003, we ca we we deciphered the entire human genome. For instance, over here. All those, you can't see it, but that's all just the letters uh, A's and T's and G's and C's. There's nothing, it's, it's the, the human sequence of DNA. And, and we now know that, and we can look at and, and specifically target different genes to say, well, Parkinson's is caused by this, and this disease is caused by that, and, and diabetes is caused by this. Um, and so we know what's going on in the, in the human genome. We can look and see uh, uh, the, the, the genetic problems that, that might cause some of the, the problems that we have, health problems that we have in the society. And maybe we can even target them in the future. And that's kind of where we're headed. Um, um, and and that, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're not, I'm not, this is not an in-depth history. And I'm, this is not a history class. It's a biology class. And I just want you to get an understanding of where we started. We started with a, a we were completely wrong, Aristotle, not spontaneous generation. Um, we, we, we showed circulation. We looked at the human form and anatomy. We classified organisms. We showed connections to the past and present, how those things changed, what was the mechanism in them. And then we got to DNA. We understand the process that, that takes place. And it's really cool. At it, it, your age, um, the, what the future holds. We can talk about cloning or we can talk about genetic engineering and we can talk about the ethics of those things and whether or not we should do them. Just because you can do something, you may not mean that you should. Um, but those are, those are the kind of things that, that we, we talk about in biology in a very, very rough outline. If you have any questions, please stop by me in, in class and, and, and uh, talk to me or ask me questions during the talk class when we talk about it. Um, but that's basically uh, the, the, the back basics of, of the history of, of biology. Just some of the things that we talked about. 
Uh, as I said, if you have any questions, make sure you, you take a look. Take a look at your book. Um, but I look forward to working with the rest of the year.